Hi, this is Pete from One Identity Support. In this video, I'll show you how to create user or group overrides for authentication services using group policies. First, a quick review of what are overrides. Overrides allow you to use identity information for users and groups from Active Directory, but modify individual attributes on certain hosts as needed. Any Unix attributes can be overridden with this method. So for user accounts, the attributes you can override are the login name, UID number, the primary GID number, the comment, the home directory, or the login shell. And for group accounts, the attributes you can override are the group name, the group ID number, or the group membership. Ordinarily, overrides are configured on each host in Etsy opt quest vas by editing their individual user override and group override files. However, as I'll now show you, we can also push overrides out automatically to groups of servers managed by group policies. To start, open up the group policy management utility on a Windows server that you have installed the QAS control center on. If you don't have the control center installed, you won't have the group policy plugin required to edit QAS policies. Now, right click on the appropriate policy. In this case, we'll use the default domain policy and open it for editing. Then, browse through the policy on the left to locate the QAS user and group override policies. These policies can be found under Computer Configuration, Policies, Unix Settings, Quest Authentication, Identity Mapping. You'll see here the User Account Override and Group Account Override. Notice that the Apply Mode column on the right here says Merge. What this tells us is that the overrides created here will be merged with any that may already exist in the user override file on your server. This is helpful in case some servers require overrides in addition to the ones pushed out globally through your policy. In this example, we'll set up a couple of user account overrides. To set up group account overrides, the process is the same, just the available attributes are different. Now, open up user account override. You'll see two tabs. The first, User Settings, is for the overrides themselves. There is one override per line, just as in the user override file on your server. The second tab, Text Replacement Macro, allows overrides that are pushed out to be customized for each server based on command output or environmental variables on the server itself. Now let's create a macro we can use in our overrides. Click Add. You'll see that the macro works just like the find and replace feature found in every text editor. We'll add a string to search for, then we'll add a command or variable which will be evaluated on your server, and the output of this command or variable will be used to replace your search string. For example, we can use dollar sign hostname as a string to look for. And then use the system command bin hostname to get the actual name of our system to use in the override. If you want to use a variable instead of the command, make sure you click the environmental variable radio button at the bottom. Now click OK. Now go back to the first tab and we'll create some user overrides. To start, click Add. And then we'll search for the name of the account we want to override. For this user, example, we want to change the username to app user on the systems. To do that, just go to the username field and enter app user. Then hit OK. Now we'll create another override. This time we'll use the macro that we created earlier. Hit add again. Search for another user. We'll use example 2 this time. For this user, we want to change the username to app admin plus the host name. So we'll use our macro. So to do that, enter app admin dollar sign hostname. name. 
The host name will be replaced with the actual host name once the macro is applied. Now hit OK. Now hit OK once more, and the overrides and the macro will be saved. Finally, let's look at a system and check the overrides that were created. Changes to group policies are not pushed out immediately. By default, the new policy may take up to 90 minutes to apply. Once the policy is applied, however, you'll see the two new overrides in the user override file. You will not see the macro that was created anywhere, however you can see that it was applied because the username in the second example contains the host name of this system. Now let's look up our accounts and verify that they are applied correctly. Make sure to include the dash O option, otherwise VAS tool will show the original users without any overrides applied. You can see that the correct usernames are being applied in both examples. This concludes our video on how to create user or group overrides for authentication services using group policies. To learn more about One Identity, visit our portal.